If you want to get better at strumming your guitar and you're looking for some fresh insights to add some artistry to your playing right now, but also into the future, you're in the right place. I'm David Harsh with Guitar Success For You. Welcome to another strumming workout video. Not long ago, I created an experimental 25 minute strumming workout for our channel here that got a very positive response. Because people offered so many encouraging comments and asked for more content like this, I've created another strumming workout video, the one you're watching right now. This is your next level strumming workout video, version 2.0. By the way, if you haven't seen the first one, you can check it out here whenever you want. My wife was the inspiration behind these strumming workout videos because she goes through YouTube workout videos on her rowing machine. And I thought, why not do a strumming workout video on the guitar, right? Now, what does a workout consist of? We warm up, we work out, and we cool down. Right? And right here, along the bottom of your screen, you can track your progress and see how far we've come together in our workout today by watching the glowing green dots progress to the right. So let's jump right in. Now, some of the people who watched our previous workout video on YouTube weren't using a pick. How do I know? I visited some of their YouTube channels and they did just fine strumming their songs without a pick. So I'm actually gonna have us start this section of the workout video without a pick. Today we won't be playing chords as we strum. I will show you some things later on in our workout today that validate the artistry of a couple strumming patterns I'll teach you as I play them with chords, but you are not accountable for chords at all today. So I'll invite you to take your fretting hand and gently rest it against the strings to mute them. No need to press down to fret any notes. It should sound dry. If you're hearing notes, as you press your hand against the frets, maybe release that tension just a bit so it sounds like this. So let's warm up with some quarter notes, but just using our strumming hand thumb, like this. I'll start at a tempo of quarter note equals 60 beats per minute here in 4-4 time. This is quite a bit slower than the tempo we used to start our first workout video. Here we go. One, two, three, four. Now, just for review, or this may be new, there are four quarter notes in a measure of four, four time. So the quarter note gets a beat, and we count these. One, two, three, four. The arrows are down, 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 down. Also, my strumming legend uses red for the down arrows and blue for the up arrows. If a strum is voiced, it will appear as a solid arrow. If it's not voiced, like these starting off beats are not voiced, it's a dotted arrow. Make sense? One advantage of strumming with the flesh of the thumb is that it creates a warmer, mellower tone, which can be nice. Another advantage is that it's a lot softer. So if I'm on the road and I'm staying in a hotel or something and I don't want to disrupt the restful sleep of my neighbors, I can fret chords and verify that I'm fretting those chords correctly by strumming ever so lightly with my thumb. You're doing great. Okay. Let's try a slightly different strumming approach involving our fingernails like this. We'll play these quarter notes at the same tempo as we continue to warm up here. One, two, three, four. I do this on several of my songs where I don't have time to switch between fingerstyle and strumming. And hey, you can't drop your pick because you're not holding one, right? This is just a warm up. By the way, slower tempos aren't just good for warming up. They're good for musicianship. Sometimes some of the most challenging music I've played on stage or in the studio is slow. It can be even harder to strum slowly well than to strum quickly at times. And the slow songs are definitely out there in all genres of music. Okay, great job. Let's try one more pickless strum by doing what I call the invisible pick. I basically pretend like I'm holding a pick by gently squeezing my thumb and index together. And I strum. One, two, three, four. 
One factor to consider is that if I have longer nails on my strumming hand, specifically my thumb and index, that may cause the nails to catch on the strings as I strum, especially if I'm doing more complex rhythms. If I've got shorter nails, no problem. But longer nails like mine can be a bit of a hindrance to strumming with an invisible pick. So that's our invisible pick process. And let's stop for a moment. Now at this point, I'm gonna grab my actual pick. Here's the thing. If you don't yet have experience with a pick and you're like, hey, I wanna wait a bit before I add the pick to my strumming, but I still wanna hang here for the workout, then please do. This is your race, your pace. I will say that the faster we go, and we will increase tempo today, you may find that your strumming hand gets tired a little sooner if you're not using a pick. So just be aware of what you need. I'm here for you, but you need to be here for you too. Cool? If you want to use a pick, but you haven't felt as comfortable about how to hold a pick, we've got you covered. This video is a short, concise tutorial on the four important things you need to know as you hold a pick well. Okay, let's strum quarter notes with a pick now at the same tempo. One, two, three, four. Remember, if you have a preferred tempo, you can adjust your YouTube video settings. That might be one reason why it's called YouTube, right? Just click that little gear icon and look for playback speed. You've got your choice of speeds, so if you need to slow down or speed up, you totally can. You are in charge. Now, as I like to talk about, strumming is a lot like badminton. It's an excellent balance of arm and wrist. Too much arm is like tennis. Too much wrist is like ping pong. Badminton is the best balance of wrist and arm. So as long as your arm and wrist are relaxed, this will translate into greater artistry in your playing. Wait for it. Even for those who can't see you play. Some folks may only hear you on an audio recording, and that's actually a way that a lot of people experience music just by listening to it, right? So these essential habits will really help. Okay, great job. Now, here's a question. What do I do when I'm in the recording studio and the tempo is slow like this? You might find this interesting. I double the click without doubling the tempo. So right now, how many clicks would we have per minute if we doubled 60 clicks? That's right, 120 clicks per minute. Please note that I'm not doubling the tempo, just the click. The tempo is still 60 beats per minute. And by hearing two clicks instead of one for every beat, I can really lock the rhythm in. You may have tried this, and if you have, you know how effective it can be. Let's give this approach a try. Again, we are at quarter note equals 60 with the click at 120. We'll have eight clicks per measure. Here we go. One, two, three, four. Let that double click guide you to greater precision. The second click is your silent up strum, right? You got this. I received some really positive feedback on our first workout video about how encouraged people were by the quotes I shared. So I've got several more for you today. And spoiler alert, most of them are from the legendary martial arts expert, Bruce Lee. Now, I'm not experienced in martial arts, and I don't share the same spiritual beliefs that Bruce Lee did, but I do have a deep respect for his wisdom and discipline. I'll lead off with one of his quotes that one of my YouTube subscribers shared in the comments for my first strumming workout video. Here it is. Knowing is not enough, we must apply. Willing is not enough, we must do. The fact that you are watching this with me and likely strumming along shows that you are an implementer. Now, it's okay to have knowledge, but Bruce Lee's wisdom really rings true here. If we don't actually do something with that knowledge, there's really no use for it, right? So good job being an implementer or a doer. You're gonna reap benefits from what you're putting in here with me today, much more so than someone who doesn't take action. Good job with those down strum quarter notes. Does that feel pretty solid for you? All right, let's pause. Okay, so we've warmed up with quarter notes with our thumb, with our fingernails, with our invisible pick, and with our real pick. You good? Take a sip of water if you've got a water bottle handy. 
Let's switch to eighth notes at this same tempo now, strumming down and up with a click for every eighth note, but still at the same tempo of 60 beats per minute. Here we go. One, two, three, four. One and two and three and four and down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. Okay, that's good. Nice work. Just when you think you know what's coming, I'm gonna switch things around a bit. Let's now try three, four time. Three, four time means that we've got three beats in a measure and a quarter note still gets one beat. We'll still feel the same cadence of beats, but now we have three beats in a measure instead of four. Same tempo of 60 beats per minute, same double click configuration, but let's go back to quarter notes for a moment. We'll have six clicks in each measure to help us along. One, two, three and we're in. What's the point of strumming in 3-4 time, you might ask? Well, as strumming guitarists, we will encounter different time signatures. And although 4-4 four, four time is the most common, there are other time signatures that are worth familiarizing ourselves with, including this one. In 3-4 time, there are three quarter notes. We count these as one, two, three. Down, down, down. Good work. I've appreciated this tempo, and I'm sure you have too, but I think it's time to ramp up a bit. If you're strumming without a pick, you may feel this a bit more, but don't worry. You're in charge of the speed of today's video. Okay, let's increase our tempo to quarter note equals 80 beats, but with 160 clicks per minute. So a double click still here in 3-4 time. And spoiler alert, we'll be in 3-4 time for the duration today. We're still strumming quarter notes right now. Here we go. One. Two, three. That's just a bit faster. I like it. Want another Bruce Lee quote? Sure, why not? Notice that the stiffest tree is most easily cracked, while the bamboo or willow survives by bending with the wind. I think this applies literally to our strumming hand and arm because we really do want to avoid tension as we play. But it also applies to our mindset as musicians to just be flexible and adaptable. I've learned over the years that being flexible is really the way to go. I find that if I'm all worked up and tense about something, life is way less enjoyable. And that tension will translate directly into the music I play. Do you agree? Okay, let's pause. Okay, now I'm gonna gear down before ramping up. I'll explain what I mean. I'm gonna take the clicks down to 80, half as many as we just had, but the tempo will stay the same. Let's see how you do with three, four time at this same tempo, but only 80 clicks instead of 160. We'll have three clicks per measure, one for each quarter note. See if your hand responds better having strummed with the double click. Here we go. One, two, three. Again, we count these quarter notes as one, two, three. Down, down, down. It's good. Does that feel pretty natural, even with half as many clicks? You're getting steadier. Okay, good work. We're gonna stay at this tempo for a while. Now, let's move to eighth notes at this new tempo. There are six eighth notes in a measure of three, four time. Here we go. One, two, three. Really, our hand is moving at the same speed as with the quarter notes, but with us making contact on the way up as well. We're strumming twice as many notes. The rhythm is one and two and three and down, up, down, up, down, up. Does that feel fairly natural? You got this. You're doing great. Next up, offbeat eighth notes. We're only gonna make contact as we strum up. 
And with these repeated measures, it can be easy to get lost. I'm not worried about which beats start the measure at this point. I just want you to get comfortable with the steadiness that comes with consistent strumming. So listen for the click of the metronome, but only strum down silently as you hear it. And then come up, making contact with the strings when you don't hear the metronome. This is easier done than said. I'll start and you can jump in whenever you'd like. One, two, three. The rhythm is and, and, and. We're now only strumming up, up, up. This is less natural, but nevertheless, just as valid as a workout exercise. Good for you. You're increasing the level of difficulty, which will lead to increasing your level of skill. And let's pause. Next up is a higher level of difficulty because we're going to move our hand twice as fast, but for all down strummed eighth notes. You ready? If you're like, no, then you're in charge. Feel free to hit the pause, rewind, or come back to me when you're ready. I'll be here, but if you are ready, let's go. This process of strumming all down eighth notes means every beat and every off beat is a down strum, which means there will be six down strums in every measure. These will go twice as fast as what we've been doing, but in a moment, you'll be glad I pushed you to move your hand this fast. So let's try this. One, two, three. One and two and three and down, 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 down. It's okay to accent the beats if that helps. An accented strum can be made visible by a ball on the end of an arrow, which is complemented by a little greater than symbol below the notes, which indicates an accent in notation. By the way, did you notice something unusual about the rhythmic notation we've been using? The note heads are quite a bit narrower. They're used here strictly to indicate rhythm, not pitch. So although these note heads all fall on the middle line of the treble clef, which is B, as you've probably figured out, we're not playing any B notes. It's just a simpler way of indicating rhythm in case you were curious. Okay, good job. And just as you might have suspected, we're gonna switch to 16th notes now. Same tempo in three, four time. How many 16th notes do you think we'll have in each measure of three, four time? That's right, 12. Here we go. One, two, three. One e and a, two e and a, three e and a, down up, down up, down up, down up, down up, down up. Again, accenting the beats is optional, but if you wanna do that, go for it. Now, if you've watched my previous strumming workout video and you're a detail person, which you just might be, you'll remember that the tempo I used throughout that video was quarter note equals 92 beats per minute. That's 12 beats per minute faster than the tempo we're strumming with right now at 80 beats per minute. Why the slower tempo today? Because I got enough feedback from subscribers who watched that other workout video saying that they did fine until they got to the 16th notes. And then things got a little too tricky. Some people said the 16th notes were way too difficult in those early stages of their guitar playing. So I'm working to help make these a bit easier by guiding you a bit slower through them. I hope that helps. Another thing people commented about in our previous workout video was the fact that I could strum and speak. If you're interested in knowing my detailed process for strumming and speaking and beyond, I encourage you to check out the video I linked to with a little prompt in the upper right hand corner of your screen. But here's the thing, like many of the skills I can quickly summon, strumming and speaking is not something that I just learned to do in a day. I've been working at it for quite a while. Some of the most worthwhile things in music and in life take time, right? Okay, good work. All right, let's try a faster tempo, but with eighth notes again. I wanna gear up for the first of two strumming patterns I'm gonna incorporate into today's workout. Our new tempo, still in three, four time, is quarter note equals 104 beats per minute with one click per beat. This is our fastest tempo today. Let's strum down and up with eighth notes in this new tempo. Listen to it for a sec. 
One, two, three, here we go. We're still strumming. One and two and three and one and two and three and down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. Here's another Bruce Lee quote, which was offered in the comments of our previous workout video by one of our YouTube subscribers. It's from Bruce Lee's book, and it says this. If you keep a knife in the drawer, it will become dull. But a few strokes a day keep it sharp. So, don't keep your guitar in its case. Don't let your skills sit undeveloped, right? Good job getting in your strokes today. You're doing great. Okay, let's pause and maybe grab a sip of water. Okay, we're now gonna play the first of two strumming patterns in 3-4 time. I basically just refer to this first one as the 3-4 time strum because there's not a lot of complexity to it. We remove the offbeat of beat one or the and of beat one and simply strum down, come up silently, and then down, up, down, up. Let's try this at quarter note equals 104, the tempo we've just started using. Here I go, jump in whenever you'd like. One, two, three. The rhythm is one, two, and three, and one, two, and three, and down, down, up, down, up, down, down, up, down, up. You will come across songs in three, four time in multiple genres of music. Okay, let's take a break for a moment. To validate this strumming pattern, I'm gonna strum some chords with it. This is just for demonstration purposes. I'm not asking you to strum along unless you want to, because as I mentioned at the beginning of today's video, you're not accountable for chords today. Now, I did get some comments in our previous video asking which chords I was using, so I'll tell you which ones I'm gonna be using today. I'm starting with an A minor seven, then moving to an F2, then a C5, and then a G. These are actually the same four chords I used last time in the same order, but starting on the A minor seven instead of G for a different tonal center. So here's the three, four time strum with some chords. You can strum along with or without chords if you want, or you can just listen. One, two, three. Stop there. I've got one more strumming pattern to share with you today, and I think you are going to love it. Before we continue, if you feel inclined to like, subscribe, and ring the bell, I would be tremendously grateful, and so would my wife who's filming this video right now. We've got more great stuff coming your way, and we value having you as a subscriber. Okay, if you're a beginner, this could be your opportunity to take a break from playing for a moment, but keep watching. I call this strumming pattern the three, four time up accent strum. Remember earlier when I mentioned that I like to place a ball on the end of an accented strum arrow? This can apply to blue up arrows as well. Take a look. The rhythm for this pattern incorporates eighth notes and 16th notes, both of which we've played today. It's a bit more complicated, but in my opinion, totally worth it. The rhythm is one and a, e and a three and a, one and a, e and a three and a. The arrows are down, down, up, up, down, up, down, down, up, down, down, up, up, down, up, down, down, up. That accented up strum on the uh of beat one really makes this groove. And the fact that we emphasize beat three allows for a chord change opportunity on that beat as well. So listen or play along if you want, as I play this at quarter note equals 80 beats per minute. This is the most advanced we'll go today, so if this seems a bit complicated, don't worry. I just want you to hear what's possible. Try to be that bamboo or willow in the wind and just go with me here. Here I go at 80 beats per minute. One, two, three. One and a, e and a three and a one and a, e and a three and a down, down, up, up, down, up, down, down, up, down, down, up, up, down, up, down, down, up. Nice. 
bass, right? Now, I could demonstrate this for you with chords all by myself, but what if I brought a drummer into the mix? I like that idea. So here's a tiny glimpse at one of our guest expert interviews in the Guitar Success For You membership with Jason Edwards, a phenomenal drummer. In our interview, we play through a couple dozen strumming patterns. This is just one of them, the three, four time up accent strum we've just been working on. Listen to how Jason responds spontaneously on the kit as I strum this pattern with the chords C5, G add nine, F2, G, A minor, E minor, F2, G. Notice that the chords I play land on beats one and three, which really give motion to this strumming pattern. This clip is only about 30 seconds long, but I think you'll really appreciate it. You can strum along with or without chords, or you can just listen and enjoy. One, two, three. Wasn't that cool? I love musical artistry in collaboration. Okay, we're there. Let's cool down with some quarter notes, first at quarter note equals 104 beats per minute and decreasing from there. And if you have your pick between your fingers, great. If your pick is your fingers or your thumb, that's great too. Here we go. One, two, three. So let's talk through what we've gone over today. We began by experimenting with different strumming textures or approaches using our thumb, using our fingernails, and even strumming with an invisible pick before embarking on using an actual pick. We took a few pages out of a theory book to talk about how 3-4 time is different from 4-4 four, four time. We strummed quarter notes, eighth notes, offbeat eighth notes, all down strummed eighth notes, and even sixteenth notes all in 3-4 time. We varied our tempo a bit, and lastly, we embarked on two legit strumming patterns, even taking a moment to hear one of them in collaboration with a drummer, which was really cool. Ready for one more Bruce Lee quote? I love this one. I fear not the man who has practiced 10,000 kicks once. I fear the man who has practiced one kick 10,000 times. I mean, really. If we take the single guitar concept of strumming and we hone in on it like we've been doing today, we become specialized strummers. Who does that bless? Well, us, of course, because once we've got our strumming hand locked in, we can add in other aspects of music like chords and singing. And if we're solid in these essentials, we can be much more aware of the song we're playing, the band we're playing it with, and the people we're serving. But as you probably gathered from the drumming video excerpt, our rhythmic steadiness blesses our collaborators as well. And if you love the Lord, you know that your skillful offering can be worshipful and pleasing to Him. Rhythm is an essential part of what we do, and strumming is a critical part of our rhythmic expression, right? Okay, let's pause for a second as we continue to cool down. I'm going to slow down my metronome to 92 beats per minute, the tempo of our last workout video. It may even feel familiar to you if you've gone through that video recently. One, two, three. The only difference is that we're in 3-4 time here, but the mechanics are the same because these are steady quarter notes. That last quote from Bruce Lee about practicing one kick 10,000 times reminds me of a Latin saying I learned a few years ago. The saying is this, repetitio est mater studiorum, which means repetition is the mother of learning. Have you heard that one or some rendition of it? Now, some of us don't like the idea of repeating things ad nauseum to get better at them, but really muscle memory is dependent on repetition. We really can learn by repeating things. And I'm hoping I've provided enough repetition, balanced with enough variety today, that you've been able to get some good traction. 
But ask yourself, how many times will I strum my guitar over the course of my lifetime? How many times will I complete that rhythmic cycle of down and up? Hundreds of thousands? Millions? I couldn't even begin to count. So if this is as integral to our artistry as it seems to be, it's definitely worth taking a good look at how we do it and reinforcing good habits as we do it right. And we've done that today. Okay, let's pause and gear down to one more tempo that will be our slowest for today. Now we're gonna roll the metronome back down to 60 beats per minute, the tempo we started with today. Here we go. One, two, three. Okay, so as we cool down today and come in for a landing, remember that it's not only good to repeat the articulation of strumming, it's good to repeat workouts like this one. Just as my wife goes through her roaming YouTube workout videos over and over to reinforce the process and to get in better shape, I hope you'll consider going through today's video again. And we've come full circle. It's good to be us. Great job today. I hope you got some good traction with today's workout video. Feel free to comment or to share this video with someone you know. And hey, if you haven't checked out our other strumming workout video, or even if you have, I invite you to make your way over to that video the next time you sit down to work on your strumming skills. Thanks for working out with me today, and I'll see you soon.